So the IB only tends to ask really one question about this assessment statement, and we'll get to that in a tiny bit. So here is the graph showing the first ionization energy across period three. So the minimum energy required to remove an electron from a gaseous atom. That's the first ionization energy. Let's start off with sodium. So sodium has the lowest first ionization energy in period three. So you can think of it as the easiest electron to remove. The easiest fragrance electron to remove in period three is sodium. Let me draw out the uh, arrows in boxes. And so it's that 3s electron that's gone. Now, of all the ones we're going to look at, that was the easiest because that electron was the furthest from the pull of the nucleus. Now, with magnesium, the nuclear charge is slightly higher, and so that electron's going to be a little harder to pull off, and it's going to have a slightly higher first ionization energy. The reason it's slightly higher is because the nuclear charge on magnesium is higher. So the attraction to that valence electron is higher. The next one is aluminium, which has an electronic arrangement of 2, 3. Now that electron's actually easier to pull off than perhaps you'd have expected. Now we need to show the sub-energy uh, sub levels here, the sub-levels. That's the 3p, and that's that one electron there. So when I pull that one electron off of the 3p, it's actually easier than I expected from looking at the patterns. So let's try and establish why. There are kind of two competing reasons why. Look at this little cartoon and see if you can work out what makes him happy. Maybe, maybe you know that a p orbital, or indeed any orbital, is stable when it's empty, half full, or it's full. So anything that results in an empty half full or full orbital is going to be kind of energetically favored. It's going to be slightly easier than you think. And that's why when you pull that 3p electron off, it actually takes a little less energy than expected. For silicon, pulling off that 3p electron, well, that takes more energy. You're pulling it off of a higher nuclear charged atom. Up to phosphorus, and this one doesn't particularly fit the pattern. Phosphorus has a stable half-filled orbital for the 3p. And so you'd think that it would take a lot of energy to break that stability, and that doesn't really fit with the pattern. So don't worry too much about that. It's the same pattern as before. More nuclear charge, it's harder to pull the electron off. So this is where the point is buried here for the sulfur. So sulfur is 286, and you can see from the uh, electronic configuration that that one electron there, when it leaves, is going to leave a stable half-filled 3p. So that's why that is energetically favoured. That requires less energy than you'd expect from the trend, because removing that electron leaves a stable electronic configuration. Now, the IB's alternate answer, and to be honest, that normally comes up more often in the, in the Mark scheme, is that those electrons were paired, and that, that leaving electron, uh, the pair of electrons is intrinsically unstable, and when that electron left, it leaves behind a more stable configuration. Although I'm not convinced that's a great answer. On to chlorine, and the regular pattern continues. You're adding uh, a proton to the nucleus each time, and that's making it more attractive and the electrons need more energy to leave. And finally, with argon, that has the smallest atomic radii, argon, the most protons in the nuclei. And so the, uh, the valence electron in argon is going to be really difficult to remove, going to require lots of energy, the highest energy in period three. Now, in England, the answer would be that you're breaking a stable octet, but breaking that electron off just there. But that answer doesn't seem to work for the IB, that you're breaking a stable octet, which requires a lot of energy to break something that's intrinsically stable. So I can annotate the graph to show the main energy level, or in this case, the third energy level, third shell, really, for the S and the P. And with this graph here, I can show the main energy levels again. That's the big number, the 1s, the 2s, the 3s. And the sublevels, which is the S, the P's, the D's, the F's. Notice how the 3p is split into 2, as is the 2p. Uh, if we were to continue on from argon, you, it turns to potassium. 
which is lower because the electrons moved from a shell that's further out. And so the IB also likely to notice that helium, neon and argon are kind of where the energy levels end, the main energy levels. Personally, I find this really, really boring and I'm having a bit of a motivational issue just to finish these. I wish I hadn't left all the boring ones to the end, but here we go. 2881 blah 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 blah. <laughs>